Freaks, uh, this is becoming a tradition. A best of show on Friday. I'll be back this weekend with a brand new episode. So looking forward to that. Hopefully also I'll have some uh, new videos uh, to share with you. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, Someone in the Discord let me know that uh, we are close to 900 members uh, over there. So if you are not checking out our Discord, go to distortedview.com. There's a link on the main navigation bar. You can chat with other listeners of the program. If you ever thought to yourself, wow, I really wish I could watch some of the scat porn that Tim features on the show. I'm sure there's some over there. There are a lot of very not safe for work clips and links. Be warned. Nasty stuff lies in that Discord. All right, uh, take a listen to this best of show, and I will see you back uh, probably tomorrow with the weekend show. So until then, have a great day. Bye, freaks! It's that real shit, yo. Butterfly in the sky. Come on! I can go twice as high. Let's get it on. Take a look. Nigga. In a book. My nigga. Reading rainbow. You think it's a game? My nigga, ways to grow, nigga, a reading rainbow. Here we go again. I can be anything. Same old shit. What? Take a look, nigga, in a book. My nigga, a reading rainbow. This is the shit I be talking about. Oh, reading you rainbow. You think it's a game? You think it's a game? Oh, 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 oh. What y'all really want? <laughs> what y'all really want? Thursday, May 29th, 2014. Coming up on the program today, my war with Miracle Whip gets a new ally. Plus, being raised by a strong black mama, being faggotized the wrong way, and a scrotum for as far as the eye can see. All of this plus your voicemails today on the Distorted View Show. All right. Hi, Franks. Tim Manson with you. Thank you so much for joining me on this program. That's a program with a U instead of an A because you are what makes this program so great. If that were only the case, I should say welcome to the program because I am what makes this program so great. It's a program with an I instead of an A. Program. Look, we are not off to a good start today. Let's start over. Hey, freaks. Welcome to the Distorted View Show. My name is Tim Henson. I learned something uh, mildly interesting today. That old shrew, Dr. Laura, is still around. You know, she used to have this massive radio show that was on AM stations across the globe, like 500 or maybe a million different radio stations, somewhere between 500 and a million stations. Uh, And then I think she got in trouble for some shit she said. And now she's still around, but she's only on Sirius, which is where, like, radio people go to die. No one else will hire you. Go to Sirius XM. And don't think I haven't tried to get a job there. (laughs) I did. But that's different. Sirius is great because you can swear, right? You know, there's no FCC rules. I actually worked for Sirius for a very short time producing a morning radio show. I was supposed to have my own show. Then they said, well, we don't have money. Why don't you just produce someone else's radio show and do it from Columbus? The show is broadcasted out of uh, broadcasting out of uh, California. You'll be in Columbus and that's all going to be sent to New York where then the signal is uh, shot off into space. It seemed like a brilliant idea, didn't it? (laughs) Lasted a couple months. Thankfully for me, there was life after Sirius. But anyway, Dr. Laura is on uh, Sirius XM. I was surprised she was still around. And the reason why I found out that Dr. Laura is still around is because on Facebook, people share her quotes. She posts little pictures with quotes and inspirational sayings like, If you're still trying, you have not failed. Don't let people's compliments get to your head. And don't let their criticisms get to your heart. You know, bullshit like that. Women eat this fucking shit up. That last quote was shared over 3,600 times. 
Someone shared one today. I guess one of my friends because it popped up on my feed. A woman can't change a man because she loves him. A man changes himself because he loves her. What sort of fucking bullshit quote is that? It's another example of this idea that women make men better. Men are just fucking slobs. We're boobs. We're just waiting for the right woman to come and fix us up. And I understand, like, when you get in a relationship, you do sort of change. But it's a, it's a... It's it's circumstantial. It's not because a woman's making you better. You know, you just got responsibility and you step up and all this other bullshit. Now, imagine, if you will, if uh, I posted something, but it was it's the reverse of that quote. A man can't change a woman because he loves her. A woman has to change herself because she loves him. Oh, my God, there would be outrage. No man's going to change me. A true man won't won't try to change me. This is just another example of our patriarchal, misogynist, and rape-condoning society. Hashtag yes to all women. Look, if you are going to scrutinize men sniffing out gender bias, you gotta stop with this easy man-hating bullshit. I mean, you gotta, you gotta start playing the game too, ladies, if you're forcing us to play. And also, let me defend white people here for a moment. That's right, it's gonna get a little racial. I was reading a news article about Google, and the headline infuriated me. The headline should have read something like this. It was about uh, the HR boss over there at Google said something like, uh, you know, Google employees are overwhelmingly white and male. We want to introduce more diversity. So the headline should be like, you know, Google workforce is too white and male, admits HR boss, something like that. Here's what the headline was in the newspaper. Google workforce is too white and male, admits white male HR boss. So here Google is saying, look, we would like to introduce more diversity (laughs) into our organization. We realize right now, and they break it down with like stats. We got a lot of white male employees. We would like to hire more blacks. But then the newspaper has to add that little dig in the headline. According to the white male HR boss, it's like, give them a fucking break. We all know white people are the devil, but the HR boss is saying the right thing. Google's saying the right thing here. They're putting a spotlight on the fact that they've got a lack of diversity and they want to change it. Of course. The HR boss is part of the problem. We should fire him immediately. He should resign because he's white and he needs to provide for his fucking family. I posted a link to this on um, on Facebook just to start a discussion on my little personal uh, Facebook profile. Uh, and someone pointed out, you know, later on in the article, it says that like 30% of the employees aren't even white. They're Asian. So there's 30% Asian, 61% of the employees are white. So it's like, you know, okay, I get it. There's there's still a lot of white people at Google. But 30% are not white. Well, actually, 39%, whatever the other, the 9% was probably like black or Eskimo. (laughs) I don't know. Well, you know, Google has a lot of property. I'm guessing there are Hispanics on the payroll mowing the the lawn, (laughs) doing yard work and stuff. Now, I understand there's probably like not enough black people at Google, but are there a lot of black pe- This is probably racist. Are there a lot of black people graduating with like computer science and, and engineering degrees compared to whites and Asians? If anything, I would think if I were Asian, I would be pissed off. Because, you know, Asians in math, they love that shit. There should be way more there should be way more Asians than whites working at Google. All right, I just thought that was an interesting uh, headline, interesting meaning I wanted to blow my brains out when I read it. I've got some audio to share with you now. Let's get into some fun stuff here. Talking a lot about white people at the top of the program. I've got a clip of a strong black woman here. (laughs) I think she is doing a wonderful job parenting her son. She discovered that uh, her son's grades were slipping. He was smoking weed. And so in this clip, his mom is punishing him. She's right in front of him, making him, like, work out, like, do tons of push-ups and planks and shit. And he's crying like a little bitch. It's fantastic. (laughs) He's crying right there because it's so hard. It's hard to work out when you're stoned. Get up! (laughs) Get off the floor! (laughs) 
like no sympathy from mom whatsoever. This kid has like snot and drool running down his face. Like he is a mess. And you know the mom posted this on World Star Hip Hop. For all his friends to see. Suspend it, running around all fucking day in Salisbury, smoking weed like you a fucking man. You ain't no man. Get off of the TV stage. <laughs> you a fucking child. Stay in the child's place. You not built like that. I truly believe the mother's doing the right thing here. You are going to be somebody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's trying to build him up here. Like, you're better than that. You're damn fucking possessive. <laughs> you are going to be somebody. You're not going to be running around like a fucking hood rat. <laughs> need to smoke a joint after this to calm the fuck down. <laughs> oh, get up there! <laughs> get up there! Again. Get, oh, you better get the fuck up there! <laughs> <laughs> no, it don't. It don't hurt when you smoke the weed, do it. It don't hurt when you bring it on the bread. Apparently they have different definitions of what good grades are. I got a C plus. Get out! Now, run and laugh at your friends about this shit. <laughs> Let them see this. Get out! Y'all ain't no fucking me. Y'all little boy. Trying to live in a man's world. <laughs> when you start paying bills and buying shit and going to work, then you a fucking man! <laughs> Go to bed! I like her because she's not afraid to humiliate her child. These little assholes walk around all cocky and shit. They need to be brought down a peg or two. They're still kids. Here's my favorite part again. Get up there! <laughs> get up there! Again! Get oh, you better get the fuck up there! I've decided, <laughs> thank you, I've decided that that Michael Buble song, It's a Beautiful Day, can fit in perfectly to just about any Distorted View news story, and we will test that theory out today. But first, I've got a couple more clips to share with you. Do you guys remember the n n nigger, uh, what the fuck, I don't remember what he said. The nigger, he's trying to make the word nigger an, a, a good word. So he goes up to people, and he'll say, will you... Will you take back the word nigger? He's a white guy. I don't really understand what he's trying to accomplish here. But he talks about the niggerization of the world and uh, niggerizing society. Well, he's back with some new stuff. Hey, good morning. Have you ever been walking down the street? What? No. I don't understand that experience. Walking down the what? And somebody else is walking down the street while reading. Um, that person has been faggotized in a bad way. I agree. Reading is for faggots. Nothing gayer than reading books and stuff. By the way, is faggotizing what the gay priests do to little kids instead of baptizing? Dunk their little heads in semen. For the most part, I promote faggotization oh. in every way I can, as a term of endearment, as a... Uh, <laughs> You're quite the faggot today. You're quite faggot-looking. A way to promote homosexuality, and also as a way to get people to read books, nonfiction, watch documentaries, care about... There's no better way to get people reading than to call them a faggot. ...the real world. And this dude that's read the reading the book and walking, he cares. Like, he's read something very important in yes. his life. But he got... he went too far. He got faggotized. It was a mistake. He he needs to walk, not read. Yeah. Um, 
And I have done that, by the way. Was he walking or sashaying? How faggot-like was he walking? Past. (laughs) And one dude... uh, By the way, this guy is insane looking. He's this white guy, and he's got, like... I don't even know what the tattoos are, but the tattoos go from, like, the top, like, where his hairline is at, down the side of his face, and it comes up to a point under his cheek. I don't know if it's a star. Sportster, like jolted me out of it and kind of gave me like a wake-up call like you know what are you doing dude (laughs) you got faggotized why are you reading like that boom you got faggotized i'm gonna start walking up to people and just telling them that like people who are reading newspaper new newspapers at the bus stop or something hey dude you just got faggotized what exactly is he trying to say here i think i think the point he's trying to make is you shouldn't be reading while you're walking on a street because it's dangerous. A car might hit you. I don't know what this has to do with faggot faggotizing. Um. Anyway, I uh, what I actually want to talk about is the other f word. Um. And. Oopa. It is this UCSB dude. Uh oh. <laughs> that's out there in Santa Barbara killing people. Well, he's not out there anymore. He he shot himself. And he's he's justifying it, and other people are feeling sympathy for him. Really? Because he hasn't gotten laid. He's a virgin. He's upset about being a virgin. He's angry about being a virgin. He posts about it online. I just love that. You know, he's he's kind of informed about what's going on. He thinks he's still alive. The guy. And he feels like he's owed sex. Now nobody is owed sex. But if sex- what did I say on the podcast the other day? I may, it may have been a sideshow exclusive program. Pussy is a privilege, not a right. Twerk is legal. He can buy it. He can rent it. He can he can you know pay for it. If pussy was yeah, if pussy like if prostitution was legal, he could buy it. And he got so fuckatized that he just got obsessed <laughs> with it, and he started hating women. Was my impression. So what, what this guy is saying is the fuckadization of society can lead to violence. Nigger niggeriza- I don't even know what the fuck niggerization, faggotization, and fuckitation. Suffer and fuckatash. This guy is like a cartoon character. Hating the world, right? And there he is and he kills people. Not good. What if every gun store in the US was a brothel? <laughs> Would people really be that worse off? The solution to all of our problems. Thank you, sir. All right, I've heard enough of him. Uh, it's just, it's going to go from crazy to crazier, though. We've got uh, this guy. We featured him on the program before. Uh, his username on YouTube is Third Eagle Books. He says he's the third eagle of the apocalypse. I have no idea what that means, but he, he believes he's a prophet, and he uh, is going to school us on deviled eggs in Miracle Whip. Makes sense. Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse. Is that on your business card? And the co-prophet of these end. Oh, I I would lead with that. Definitely. A couple of months ago, one of my subscribers sent me a very interesting email. He said I should check out a new television commercial for Miracle Whip called Stacy's Deviled Eggs. And he said it was very prophetic. He said it was very <laughs> symbolic. What if Miracle Whip is, is behind the end times? I've been saying it for years. I don't trust Miracle Whip. I never liked the taste of it. I knew something was up with them. Miracle Whip is the Antichrist. So I watched it, and he was right. Of course. The only problem was it was also very obvious. Anybody could figure it out. So I dis- <laughs> Everyone should know that this Miracle Whip commercial is prophetic. Guarded that idea, and I never did a video on that particular topic. However, just yesterday, a, I watched a video by the Groxed, and he did talk about Stacy's deviled eggs. And he did not understand it. So I guess I was mistaken. I guess I will have to do a video 
Now this guy has to talk down to us because some people don't understand that Miracle Whip is the fucking devil. Explaining that commercial, because it is very important, <laughs> it is very significant for these end times, and it tells us just what the Illuminati have in store <laughs> for our church. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? A commercial about devil eggs has Illuminati links? And so first I want to take a look at some of these images of Satan. Because All right, fuck this. Let's get to the actual commercial. I should say before he actually air plays the commercial, he talks about like the clothing that Satan wears, the Virgin Mary wears and shit like that, right? Cuz he's going to link it all to this commercial. And now let's take a look at this interesting and prophetic television commercial and called Satanic called Stacy's Deviled Eggs. Here we see Stacy, dressed in red and black like Satan, sharpening her knife and preparing deviled eggs, of course. By the way, please count the number of deviled eggs. Oh. She then takes the deviled eggs to a church get-together. I saw this Miracle Whip ad, and I didn't think it was satanic, but I did think the woman who was preparing the deviled eggs was a tranny. <laughs> She's kind of mannish looking. In order to seduce the members of the church... Although she does not fool two of the women, she does fool two of the men, including the pastor of the church. Now, it should be obvious that Stacy is at least a witch with her black fingernail polish. <laughs> Obviously. But her name is almost an acronym for Satan. It has two syllables, and three of the letters are identical. And later on in the video, we see that Stacy looks quite masculine. Yes. She has another true. characteristic of Satan, and that is that he is androgynous. In fact, Stacy looks somewhat like a transvestite. And I hate that I'm agreeing with him now. He's won me over. Yes, I can see what he's saying. Did you happen to count the number of deviled eggs? Well, there are 16 of them. What the fuck does 16 mean? And 16 is not really an end times number. I mean, you could add 6 plus 1. Oh, God. Which gives you 7, but that's not really satanic. Nor does, should that count. You can't take a number that's not satanic and say, well, if you add 7 or 4 to this number, then it becomes a, you know, a satanic or end times number. That's not how it works. You can do that with any number. 16 devil eggs are made from 8 whole eggs. But 8 is also not really a number associated with evil. But if you understand that you count eggs by the dozen, that is by the number 12, and you realize <laughs> that 8 twelfths of a dozen is... There is so much math I have to do to figure out how this is a satanic commercial. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I want to I hear this. But 8 is also not really a number associated with evil. But... If you understand that you count eggs by the dozen, 12. that is by the number 12, and you realize that eight twelfths of a dozen is two-thirds of a dozen, then we indeed do have a number for the Antichrist. Because two-thirds represents man over God and yields the decimal point six six. Six. Oh, Jesus. Took a long time to get to that. All right. You know, because this is like a church and religious themed commercial, it, it gives him a lot of fodder. But he still goes after weird shit, like the egg thing, where you have to divide numbers and figure out the eggs come from 12, and then you got to divide in fractions and all this other shit. Then he starts looking at the uh, setting of the church gathering outside and what season it is. It's in the autumn, right? So he's trying to figure out what type of celebration. He doesn't think it's a Thanksgiving thing. Uh, so what could it possibly be? Could this be some kind of Thanksgiving celebration? Well, I doubt it, because at Thanksgiving, families gather around a table. I suspect this is some kind of a harvest celebration. Could it be a harvest of souls? Well, we've uncovered Miracle Whip's secret agenda. And so, at the conclusion of this commercial, we see the unholy trinity of the end times, who mimic <laughs> the divine trinity. We see Satan on the far left. Do you think maybe there's a possibility... They made this uh, commercial 
as a play on words because, you know, deviled eggs. And you use mayonnaise or Miracle Whip to make the deviled eggs. So they thought that they would have a fun time with the word devil and church and all that. Of course not. Of course not. It's got to be a sinister reason. For this commercial. All right. And with that, let's get into the crazy, bizarre, twisted, up, up, down, news right now. Yeah, if you're not a member of the Discord of You Sideshow, sign up right now. Lots of uh, Sideshow exclusive content this week. Did an extended program on Tuesday. Did an exclusive show on Wednesday. I'll be back with another exclusive show tomorrow. It's very inexpensive, and it really does help ensure that this stupidity continues on for a long, long time. It's only $6.99 a month if you sign up for a monthly membership. Uh, If you sign up for a quarterly, semi-annual, or yearly membership, it drives the monthly price down even further. I think, uh, what, quarterly memberships are 20 bucks. Semi-annuals, $35, and yearlies uh, are only $66.99. You get full access to the entire archive of program, thousands of shows to listen to, hundreds of video casts. We do DV logs, special... i got to start doing some more special video content. I used to record video record the show for a while and then i stopped doing that i'm gonna that's something that's on my list of things to bring back up uh all right so yeah sign up for the sideshow superfreaksideshow.com i've had a rough couple of months so any extra cash will be helpful uh also buy a lot of stuff at the distorted view store new black t-shirts other t-shirts are on sale go to distortedview.com slash store also you can donate at distortedview.com there's a donate button uh really do appreciate that okay three quick stories then we'll get the hell out of here first up A retarded man has a huge set of balls. It's not really what the headline says, but I like my version better. The story comes from Australia. An Ipswich man needs life-saving surgery to remove his gigantic scrotum. Never mind. I like the term gigantic scrotum. That works pretty well. Tyrone Bode has a scrotum the size of a watermelon, (laughs) and it won't stop growing. The 24-year-old from Willowbank is intellectually impaired, ting, and faces a death sentence. Unless he can raise more than $100,000 for life-saving surgery in the United States. They won't even perform the the surgery in in Australia. They don't have the know-how. I'm guessing a large part of that price is the plane tickets, because he's got to buy one seat for him, one for his balls. Uh, Tanya, his mom and full-time carer, is calling on public donations to get the treatment her son needs. Currently, they've raised $5,700. We're almost there, guys. Only $94,300 to go. Ms. Bode, a mother of four, said Tyrone was diagnosed with scrotal lymph, lymph, lymphedema or something about 12 months ago. The condition puts Tyrone's life at risk with infection that makes his temperature soar, his heart race. Oh, my God. Maybe I have that problem. Maybe that's why my heart was beating so fast. My scrotum is enlarged and his body turns septic. His scrotum has continued to grow larger and larger and is already down to his knees. See? Perks up any depressing news story. Quote, no one can help in Australia, said Ms. Bode. I had doctors discuss uh, building a team to give surgery a go, only to be told by a urologist that if I was to sign on the dotted line and allow anyone in Australia to operate, I would be signing my son's life away. She said California specialist Dr. Joel Geldman and his medical team could perform an operation to save the man's life. Dr. Geldman, a clinical professor of urology and the director of the Center for Reconstructive Urology at the University of California, is known globally for his surgery to remove a man's 60-kilogram scrotum. What a great name for a band. 60 kilogram scrotum. That equals out to about 130, 132 pounds. Holy shit! That's like a person. Like a, like a full-grown woman hanging off of your ball sack. All right, I've contacted Dr. G- uh, Geldman, and I have continuous correspondence with him. He has been monitoring Tyrone's condition via medical reports, CT scans, ultrasounds, and photographs, she said. Ms. Bode said that maintaining a normal family life was difficult. Tyrone needs help to go to the toilet. <laughs> Balls dipping in the water. And he has a lot of difficulty walking. He broke his leg in a motorbike accident earlier this year. Why would you let him on a motorbike? He's got these huge fucking balls. Could you imagine him, like, riding a motorcycle, his balls flapping in the wind behind him? Kind of like when you see a guy, like, wearing a scarf on a motorcycle. (laughs) Just 
flapping in the wind there. All right. Uh, he broke his leg in a motorbike accident earlier this year, and that's because his scrotum was a hindrance on the bike. Well, yeah. You need to put those fucking things in a sidecar. His scrotum is so big that he can't ride a bike anymore, and family and friends pitched in to get him a quad bike. Miss <laughs> Boat said her son, I'm sorry, her son had a heart of gold and rarely complained about the pain his condition caused. He's always trying to make everyone he meets laugh. He loves fast cars, motorbikes, playing jokes. Listen, I wonder if he ever teabagged his mother for a fucking concussion. Listening to music and spending time with people. A fundraising car drive for Tyrone will be held this Saturday at Ipswich. Members of the public can register for $20 for the event on site at Red Bank Plaza. If you're in Australia and want to help out this chap, you can uh, check that out. All right. Second story we have for you today. An Afghan woman set her husband on fire for failing to take action after she was raped in their rural community. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why. This this song might be a little more appropriate than the Michael Bublé thing. The New York Times reports that the rape took place in the home of an Afghani woman named Zara on Friday, May 23rd, while the husband, Najabullah, was away at work. The attacker was a neighbor. When Zara's husband returned to the house, Zara asked him to relocate the family so she would not have to see her tormentor and relive the experience. She was also afraid that she would be attacked again because her attacker knew that he would face no consequences. Afghanistan, a great place for a rapist to visit, a wonderful place for a rapist to live. Ting! This message brought to you by the Afghanistan Tourism Board. All right. Uh, so where are we at here? On Sunday afternoon, Zara grabbed a bottle of kerosene, doused Najabula in the liquid, and struck a match. Najabula was rushed to the local hospital where he's currently recovering from his injuries. Although he's not been fully interviewed by police because of his injuries, the Times reports that he said he believes his wife is just mentally ill and this is the cause of the attack. Zara said the refusal of her husband to protect her from her rapist was the last straw in a relationship defined by abuse that included Najabula setting her on fire in an effort to induce a miscarriage. a more humane way to induce a miscarriage. Just punch her in the stomach. You don't have to set her on fire. Come on. I realize you're in Afghanistan, but be a little civil. All right. Uh, so, yes, he set her on fire t- to induce a miscarriage. The Time reports that this is just one incident in a series that reveals the ways protection for women introduced by the American military after the Afghanistan invasion have changed what protections women expect of the law. So now you're blaming this on the U.S.? America came traipsing in here, and all of a sudden, women want to be treated fairly. (laughs) They don't like it when they're set on fire, all of a sudden. All right, in one incident, the parents of a 13-year-old girl are accused of mutilating a moolah. What the fuck that is? By cutting off his ears and nose. The parents have alleged the moolah was sexually assaulting their child. Moolah or mola? I don't know. I think it's like a clergyman over there. See? The Catholic Church doesn't have a total lockdown on sex abuse scandals. All right. Uh, Zara herself seems to epitomize this shift in expectations. As she gave her confession to Afghani police, a woman barged into the room asking the female police officer administering the interrogation for protection from her husband, who had just attacked her with bricks for the third time. One more story, and then we will call it a day. This is a very short one from New York. Reporters looked on puzzled as the man who state police say killed one of their own troopers Thursday. I should say, today's episode is brought to you by Michael Bublé's To Be Loved. 14 tracks of velvety smooth crooning, including the song Something Stupid featuring Reese Witherspoon. The time is right, sir. Perfume fills my head. Stars go. Pick up Michael Bublé's To Be Loved. It's available at Sam Goody stores nationwide. Ting! Reese Witherspoon, for reals, guys. I mean, come on. What are we talking about now? Dead police officer? All right, yeah, so this guy uh, killed a trooper, and this is his statement. Quote I was two miles from the Connecticut border. All of a sudden, I'm in New York. <laughs> 
and this cop got killed, and I don't know how it happened. It had to be a time warp. Again, this is a direct quote. I'm not making any of, any of this up. It had to be a time warp. I have proof in Connecticut. The time warp or something had to happen. Believe me. All right, well, why shouldn't we believe him? Upton of Melrose, Florida. Florida. Our most fucked up state. People should not be allowed to leave Florida. Keep the crazy contained. All right, so this man of Melrose, Florida is charged with first-degree murder. Police say he was found in the woods, not far from the crime scene on Interstate 81, outside of Birmingham. Birmingham. Burn. Burn. Binghamton. <laughs> What is that? I can't read that tiny print. Binghamton. He was naked, police say. The resulting crash killed Trooper Christopher Skinner, 42, instantly. Investigators said it did not appear Upton was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Upton does have a prior DWI conviction in Florida from 2008. So there you go. That, my friends, is your distorted news for Thursday. Let's do a couple voicemails and get the hell out of here. All right, checking in with some of my freaks. If you want to uh, talk to me, give us a call. We've got a voicemail line. It's 206-666-4463. Say hi. Jiguti Mibu, Haley's Comet, calling up with a quick suggestion on something that might help you with your current insurance-induced financial woes. Kill myself? You signed up through Obamacare. Yeah. And there are a lot of conservative news outlets, Fox News being the biggest one, that love Obamacare horror stories. And it sounds like you've got a pretty good one. I would suggest you either uh, re-edit the episode uh, where you give us the details on what happened and start shipping that around. Uh, maybe add some additional content to it to depict you as uh, conservative, yeah. marginally racist. You know, make and I should constantly refer to... Um uh, Obama as B- Barack Hussein Obama, bit, that Kenyan. But like a softer version of Rush Limbaugh. Cut out the oh. actual profanity, that sort of thing, and ship that around. As I a- don't know how bad Obamacare is yet. I haven't received my bills. Hey, Tim. Yeah. It's uh, TV user Wikipedia Brown. I'm the property manager guy. Uh, two things. One, started listening to Toad the Wet Sprocket because you like them, <laughs> and i got to say, I'm impressed. All right, here's what you do. Here's here's the, my top five Toe the Wet Sprocket songs. Actually, we'll go top eight, so we'll include some of the, uh, the some of their popular songs too that everyone knows. All right, first up, All I Want. That's their number one hit song. It's a good song, not my favorite, but it's the one you probably recognize. Walk on the Ocean, another popular song. Windmills is a great song. It's a little slower, but I think it's a very sweet song. Something's Always Wrong is one of my personal favorite. Come Down is also one of my favorite. Crazy Life is good. Fall Down is awesome, and Hold Her Down. Listen to those songs. You get a good idea of what Toad the Wet Sprocket's all about. They will rock your face off in a very soft, alternative kind of way. <laughs> They're not a hard rock type of band. It's vh one <laughs> All right, uh, so there you go. Oh, what else? Uh, you what's your saying? favorite album? Oh, and second, oh. another story from Property Management. There was a guy that we had to check up on because a foul smell was coming from his room. When we get in there, dirt all over the floor only it wasn't actually dirt we saw him walking around kind of limping and telling us to get out and what had been happening was that his foot had gangrene oh. and it wasn't dirt it was him his foot was it was his foot slowly rotting oh. and just dragging along the floor <laughs> as he was carrying himself across the room on a crutch the best was he was telling us not to tell him how to live his life but that room oh god the smell Threw up as soon as I got in there. You, yeah. you haven't smelt bad until you smelt a gangrene filled room. Yeah, his body is dying on him, rotting. Hey, Timmy Boo, Sideshow member Allie here. Hello. I just think it's funny that, you know, you recently played a uh, bunch of stuff on uh, James Dean. You know, yes. I started really getting into porn when I was, when I got into high school, and he, I was really obsessed with him as well. I don't know. I guess it's. I don't know what it is about him. You girls and James Dean. I need to get him on the program. But, I, I mean, I was really, I, that's, he was really all I watched. I watched <laughs> his videos over and over again. How is his penis? Is his penis something extraordinary? Because, I mean, he's, uh, you know, I, I was watching him in the, uh, on that interview. I've never really seen a porn with him. But um, he, uh, 
you know, he seems like a, a decent looking guy, like a normal looking guy. I wonder if he just has like an extraordinary penis. So I just thought it was funny when you played that. I was like, yeah. Yep, I was a high school girl, and he's what kind of got me into porn. Fingering so. yourself to James Dean while you're a little high school girl, all innocent and underage. So, anyway, <laughs> that's all I had to say. Uh, that's what James Dean likes, apparently. Look, I don't care if underage girls are jerking off to me. This helps me vent out a lot of my fucking issues, because when I was younger, I would have never thought that I would get as much pussy as I do now. And it's oh, beautiful. quit bragging! But even when it's a failure. So, I jerked off an edge all day thinking about this bitch that I've been wanting to fuck for eight months. And I finally got to tonight. She's I'm up- surprised you get so much pussy <laughs> calling these girls bitches. She's on the thicker side, but she sucks dick like a fucking porn star. She's the kind... Most fat chicks do. ...kind that will scream at you to shove it down her fucking throat while you're fingering her asshole. Fat girls are eager beavers. Right? They're willing to please. She's a fucking masochistic submissive, but she's she's butch and it's hot as shit. What? So I finally get... <laughs> this guy is into some weird stuff. Like, she's... <laughs> she's not thin. She's kind of chunky. Kind of butch. ...to her, and I'm about ready to fuck her, and I... She's balding. Four- only has one good eye. Fat in the face. Fat all around. She's got a John Goodman quality about her. That I like so much. Four minutes, and because I'm so sensitive from jerking off all day thinking about it, I couldn't do it. I I fucking, I finished way too goddamn fast. That's why you don't edge all day before you fuck abroad. You make sure you come first so you last. This is sex 101 bullshit. And at least I could blame her ridiculous non-latex condoms because I'm a Trojan Magnum dude and she... Oh my god, I hate this guy so much. Everything he says is like a kind of like concealed brag. Yeah, I blame me blowing my load so fast on her condoms. I mean, usually I'm a, I'm a magnum, a Trojan magnum man. Fuck you. All right, go Ridiculous ahead. non-latex condoms because I'm what, a... Tro- lamb skin? What, what type of condom was she using? Ridiculous non-latex condoms you use because them? I'm a Trojan magnum dude and she Where's made me on? fit into a teeny tiny... It was like trying to fit the Hulk into a youth size small. That's not even a fucking... That's not even an exaggeration. It was really bad. So at least I could blame her for my short... All of my listeners want to bludgeon you right now. Shortcomings. Shortcomings. Oh, okay, okay, enough. God damn it. That is all the time we have on this edition of the show. I want you guys to email me. Email me. E- email me. I can't... How do I do that? I want you guys to email me. There we go. Show at distortedview.com. Distortedview.com is our official website. Voicemail line for you. 206-666-4463. That's 206-660-GOD. Oh, God. Damn fucking possession! Spread the distortion. Tell all your friends about the podcast. Don't forget to rate us and review us on iTunes. Very important. Sign up for the Sideshow. Got another exclusive program tomorrow. Don't forget about Adam and Eve. Use coupon code FREAK or coupon code DV for 50% off just about any item. Three free adult DVDs and a mystery gift. All with free shipping. Did I mention that? Free shipping. Half off. Butt plugs and dildos and penis pumps and everything. Use that. Father's Day is, is coming up. Uh, don't forget the Sword of View store. Lots of great stuff there. Donate to DV. I will see you back on Monday if you are not Sideshow Freaks. Until then, bye, everybody. It's a beautiful thing. Can't stop myself from smiling. My name is Scott Micken and I like ice skating.